Hi, and welcome to the summary of the first half of session 18, Help in the High Forest, because Bonnie does not understand how buttons work. Buttons are hard, y'all. They're really hard. I thought I'd set it, the stream to record and, and stream, but I guess I just didn't hit the button like right in the middle or whatever, because for whatever reason, when we took our little adventurer's break in the middle of the session, I realized it wasn't recording anything, and I rectified everything at that point. So we have the second half of the actual session, which will follow immediately after my blabbering here. But I wanted to kind of briefly sum up what happened in the first half. Um, luckily, nothing really critical happened, I think. Uh, the party, they wanted a short rest after their spa experience. They had infiltrated a meeting of the Earth and Fire cults and kind of bamboozled their way in there. They participated in this stone ritual that uh, did a couple of them in. Basically, the, the two people who didn't drink the, the drug tea fared worse from their stone ritual experience, but it did get them into this cult meeting, so I guess it all worked out in the end. Um, they did make some, finagle some um, plans. They volunteered to pick up some kind of shipment, the rest of the boom powder plot shipment. So they got that on deck and they also tailed um, uh, Goodwife Groche to the Cat and Cucumber and to the Alchemist shop. Um, and so they know that she bought a love potion. She took it to the Cat and Cucumber uh, salon slash casino place. Uh, but they decided to not pursue that thread any further. Uh, instead, they went back to the alchemy shop and, shop and bought a bunch of stuff. And so they made plans to go to the alchemist cottage because they believe that place is going to kill several birds with one stone. But after their spa experience, they decided they need a little short rest, a little refreshment. So they called into the tavern called the Seven Stringed Harp for some chip buddies and ale. Um, and while they were resting there and having a little snack, they met Elaine Harpwell, the ex-Mrs. Ernest Elkhorn. Now, she's the ex-wife of the guy who runs the consignment, consignment shop, the antique shop, the, the Elkhorn Emporium, where the statue they're supposed to pick up for the um, Emerald Enclave is being held, but they can't get into it right now. They know the place has been robbed. It's just the whole situation. But they're trying to get a key to this place. Um, they decide after after Lean Harpel is a little bit flirtatious with Terrell and Terrell's cheeks go all red, they decide to not explicitly ask her about accessing the Elkhorn Emporium. They're like, no, no, no. We're, we're going to this cottage. We're going to find a key there because he probably has a key. So let's just put our hopes there uh, for now and not get into anything too much with this uh, Elaine Harpel woman. Uh, just, you know, eat our sandwiches and drink our beer and uh, let's not waste any time. So they traveled to Third Hill where the late wizard's cottage is and they experienced some of the different neighborhoods of Succumber as they went. Uh, a few different little architectural features. They passed the All Faiths Cathedral along uh, a road called the Sanctuary Spiral, which included a shrine to Maliki, so Terrell's God represent. They passed Theater Way, which supported several different entertainment venues. Um, and then they went through Shadow Square and the Town Cemetery, both of which were strangely eclipsed from the sunshine. There was a, like a shadow literally cast over these areas of the town, um, but nobody, I guess, rolled high enough to figure out what, what was going on there. Um, and then they passed through the Cat Sanctuary, which they found was guarded by some of the gargoyles that had been seen in the town. Previously. So they finally reached Amelia's cottage. Um, they found, they peeked in the windows and everything. And they're like, oh, is this dangerous? Is this, is, is this scary? We're very, very nervous because, you know, wizards, wizards homes do not have a good reputation. Um, and they see like a sign out front that, that says like, civilization is here. Come on in. <laughs> um, so that certainly made them feel confident. Uh, but they went inside anyhow, you know, because... What else are they going to do? They uh, went in. There's this bright yellow cat hanging around. Uh, Yelena, I think, is the one who cast 
speak with animals and starts chatting with his cat. And the cat has a lot of disdainful, leading questions about, you know, what kind of person they are. Are they bureaucrats? Are they adventurers? Blah, blah, blah. And the, everybody's getting a little bit nervous, but then they let themselves get lured into taking a drink of waiting refreshments in the parlor. Um, like some wine or something. And the cat's like, it's not poison. The cat promises, as cats do. Uh, but it did prove to be magical. And it proceeded to shrink from the party to tiny stature. And then the cat, being a cat, uh, starts kind of like toying with them. Like, oh, aren't you fun? Let me bat you with my paws. And they uh, kind of run off from the cat, trying to like escape the inquisitiveness and run into a mouse hole and find themselves in the walls. And that's where we took the break and where the recording for the session actually picks up. So I realized as soon as the break was over that I had not started it recording properly. <laughs> the first oh, half. No. oh no! And I'm kicking myself because I'm like, ooh! That actually had, that actually had gone pretty well and I like, oh crap, I didn't record it. But I'm recording now. <laughs> <laughs> it's brilliant. It's brilliant. Oh. Um, but I made an another penicillin to celebrate, though I really shouldn't drink it because I think after those two shots of um, cherry moonshine, <laughs> it is probably not advisable. If you want me to stay coherent. We'll, we'll, we're, we're here to support you, Bobby. You will, so, yeah. everybody has returned. Is everybody physically, if not emotionally, prepared? Yes. Here you go. So, you drank a concoction in, inside the parlor of, of the wizard's cottage. Uh, yeah. You listened to a cat. That was your first mistake. And, <laughs> <laughs> and so, you and your goose are all now shrunk to tiny size. You've run into a mouse hole and you're inside the walls. And as you look up, contemplating how you're going to get further into this uh, wizard's headquarters, fortress, tower, whatever it is. The inside of these walls seem to like rise a good 150 feet at least over your heads. You see there's signs of um, some spider webs. Um, detrius just from over time dust that is accumulated on the, the floor surrounding you little teeny tiny skulls well actually they aren't that teeny tiny in the stature that you are now they look pretty big but you can see like okay like maybe like a mouse or something or a squirrel or something has died inside these walls but long ago So the hole we went through isn't a hole all the way under the wall. It's not a hole all the way through the wall. It's just mm. into the, the inside of the wall. Okay. So you're between the the um, the plastering and the wood that is supporting the walls of this location. Okay, so we have to go up to go down. Yeah, up mm. seems to be the way forward looking to your left and right you don't see any obvious holes going to the other side it seems up or nothing but there does seem to be um just a patchwork of incidental um planks of wood and mortar kind of oozing out between the slats uh that seems to give you know would be areas of purchase if you were to climb up higher it will be a little bit of a physical challenge, especially for like the wizardy type. Mm -hmm. Noodle. But uh, would you like this portion like, that gives uh, you um, strength check bonuses? Mm. There is the dar bacon. Mm. Yeah, the dar bacon might be quite helpful and this sort of thing. But you, you think it will take like uh, athletics or maybe some acrobatics to inch your way upward? Um, there's no way we can tunnel our way through, no. Well-placed fireball, maybe. 
<laughs> Do we still have our ladder? <laughs> Ooh, <gasps> yes! Yes. So the ladder is stored in Yelena's bag of holding. Yelena's carrying the bag of holding for the party, right? Yeah, I think so. Um, so you open the bag of holding. Boing. And you reach in. And as you start to feel around, you realize everything inside the bag of holding and inside this extra planar space feels really huge. Mm. Like, whatever is inside the bag of holding did not shrink with you. Only the bag of holding itself shrank. Well, bugger. Okay, well, it was a good idea while it lasted. So, well, you could pull out that, that um, Kai's nifty ladder, and it would probably reach all the way to the top of the wall. It would, and it is collapsible, so, like, it wouldn't extend past, like, the, the roof of the wall. It is. It would be so big that it would just, it wouldn't be any easier to climb than the mortar that's already here. Unless we only hung on to it as we got it out, and then it would just zip us straight up. <laughs> yeah? Okay. I'm not sure of those physics, but okay. <laughs> it sounds good on paper. Now, do we have anything in there that was small, but now is going to be large compared to us that we could use? What else is in that bag? <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think it's all in your inventory, anything that's in that bag, Yelena. Ah. Uh. Inventory, inventory. Arrows, crowbar. <laughs> I mean, Kai's got a fluffy pillow. We could put that down in case we fall. Oh, we can pull out the statue. <laughs> <laughs> Arrow, a cr crowbar would be giant. Yes. Okay, like, what was a crowbar like? Usually, like maybe um. It's usually like long. about a foot long. Well, I suppose it depends. I mean, you can get smaller ones, can't you? About a foot, foot and a half. Two, two and a half feet. So like a crowbar now, it would probably like reach up to maybe almost to the first, like there's kind of like a, like a uh, two by four that's going um, horizontal between support beams. That seems like to be the, the platform next platform ahead of you. Though there is also a um kind of haphazard piece of wood that's broken off that's kind of at a diagonal. If you can see like what I'm describing on the map. But like halfway through there's kind of like that platform and like there's spider webbing around different places. Um a crowbar would almost reach that first kind of platform. But it's it's made out of iron, and it's kind of like pockmarked. But there's not a lot of good, what you can tell. There's not a lot of good footholds. And as you pull it out of the bag of holding, now it's almost like you're pulling out this like pretty heavy pipe. Like Yelena, you struggle to get it out of the bag, and you need Terrell's help to try to like examine it now. Like, what does this crowbar look like now that we're shrunk? And it takes all of your strength as well as Terrell's heavy lifting to try to even get it partway out of the bag as you evaluate this crowbar now. So we have rope that has shrunk with us, I, I think. So anything that's not in that bag of holding shrank with yeah, us? Yeah, anything that's not in the bag of holding has shrunk with you and mm. is proportional to you. Anything in the bag of holding or the tea bag of holding is still big, or still its original size, which is larger in proportion to you now. Um, but you do think that it would be fairly easy to free climb up the mortar and the wood brackets and um uh especially like the lower you are the easier it'll be because there won't be any room for like nerves to get to you about how high you are 
Is it worth us doing buddy system and tying ourselves to each other? Or at least Kai. Give Although Kai based on my zero. role so far tonight, yeah. Based on my role so far, I might, I might not be a good candidate for secure, but... I'm just wondering if I can or I can climb up and secure a rope up there someplace and... Drop from down. And, and um, you know, just have that the rope be there for helping to pull up. Okay. To help assist. Um... And Yelena, do a, a nature or survival check. Let's see. We'll do survival. Wow, you're also 11, but you got a 19. That's a pretty good survival. <laughs> yeah. So, based off of your experience of the wild and just your knowledge about, you know, nature shit. Um, what it takes to get by in this world. You look around and you see there's obvious signs of spider webs. Um, but they're kind of like, you know, sp sparsely placed here and there. There's no, like, continuous line of webbing. But from what you know of spider webs and especially your sight, you reason that... Spider webs, um, given their stickiness, they would be like difficult terrain, rough terrain. So there would be like half movement passage, but because of the stickiness, they would be very stable and it would be difficult to fall off of spider webbing. Mm -hmm. But there's that trade off that, that it would take longer and spider webbing sometimes comes with spiders and you know that right. spiders have web sets so if there are any spiders in this wall if you climb on the wrong spider webs the spiders will know you're there but it's more secure and fall free than just free climbing Yeah, my instinct is to stay clear of the spiders <laughs> in general. Su surprising that. Two and a half sessions without any combat, folks. <laughs> this is how you we just try here. You're trying to have a fight. The party, the party is cautious. The party uses strategies. And the party like rolls strategy. well when they need to. <laughs> But I, I, it looks so. Uh, are we going for that little hole there, the little blue swirly at the, in the middle there, or? I mean, that's supposed to start in it. Let's go for that. Yeah, that. Yeah, you see, you do see like up ahead. I'll say that you can make out, and it's not a blue swirly. Like directly above you, you see like within this mass of cobwebs sliding in multiple directions, there seems to be like this dark pulsing light in the center of it. While there are like other little doohickey portals on this map that, that I've let you see, you can't actually make them out from this point. You're a little bit too far down or there's there's wood blocking your um, immediate line of vision. Just like Tetris, you could like move to left or right if you wanted to, for your for your climbing pleasure. Should we climb together, or do we, some or one of us go up there? I I'm tempted to say you go ahead, but we 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 still all go up, and then if you no do it this. Hmm. I think we should all go. My concern is if a spider comes out. <clears throat> yeah, I don't want you stuck up there by yourself if all comes out. Right. Mm. All right, let's all go. Okay. But don't, don't, what, what's the 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 scroll of bouncing? <laughs> the potion of bouncing. Yeah, I I, I look at that. Hey, what uh, does that potion of bouncing do? Remind me. <laughs> the person who made it. 
Like, what the hell does that do? Right, it's... Uh, your body becomes rubbery and you're immune to falling damage for one hour. Ooh. If you fall at least ten feet, your body bounces back the same distance. Uh, as a reaction while falling, you can angle your fall and position your legs to redirect this distance. For example, if you fall 60 feet, you can redirect your bounce to propel you 30 feet up and 30 feet forward from the position where you landed. Okay. Alright, well that sounds like an ideal thing to be taken at this point. To put that into mm. perspective, to climb up this wall normally without using spider webs, it would be an athletics or an acrobatics track of a certain level and like i said before it'll be easier the lower you are and as you get higher and higher it might get a little bit harder because there's the whole like nosebleed factor of it looking the risk of looking down and being like oh fuck i am up so high getting to you so it's a little bit harder the higher you are but that potion would allow you to one not take any falling damage if you rolled poorly. And two, um, make up like you wouldn't lose ground as much as if you just fell. The other thing I'm going to say is I was going to make it be a group check. So it's not like each one of you has to roll a certain number, but like you as an average have to roll a certain number number. Okay. With the assumption that you're keeping close together and you're helping each other. So, should one of us drink the potion of bouncing? Just in case, or...? Well, I've got a plus seven to athletics. It's the only decent stat I've got, so I'm... Well, and then Tim, so I'm saying if anyone, it'd be probably you. I'm assuming Yelena's probably yeah, got I've a got, decent got as well. Good, good dex. Alright, so I'll, I'll drink the potion just in case. Cool. So Kai is now immune to fall damage. Yeah. Kai is a rubber ball. He is a bouncy, bouncy ball. <laughs> and you feel it like as you consume this potion, your skin kind of takes this weird little sheen. It's like a little bit shiny now. And if someone pokes you, it's like you hear this like little boing sound. <laughs> Faintly. There's a little bit of a pushback from your skin. Like, well, it'd, be the... lo- it'd be a lot of fun if you were a punk and you could just go into a mosh pit and, like, you know. I need to <laughs> direct you at the Discord. The um, so, you're going to start climbing. Position yourselves accordingly, like strategic, like how, where do you want to start climbing from? And I'll say each round of climbing will get you um, uh, one quarter of the way to the top. Okay, or, is that diagonal plank, is that climbable or is that just effects on the thing? That's like a resting spot. So you could like climb to that as like a halfway point. And that's also a thing where, like, potentially, if you were to be falling, you could roll a deck save to catch on to and not fall the full distance. Okay. That's basically what that is. Okay. And, like, so, like, any kind of climb, whether it is vertically or horizontally, um, one check is worth um, half of uh, distance between supporting beams or platforms. Does that make sense? So it's like four to the top, but like it's three completely to the western side or the eastern side if you start in the middle. Does that make sense? Um. Or I'm be- or am I bewildering you with facts? <laughs> yes, bewildered. Um. So like um. Let me do like drawing. It takes two to get from where you are now to to that to that. Okay. Board. It would take three to get up to. I don't know why it completed that B, but okay. B's <laughs> are threes now. To get where that green portal is, it would take three. 
uh, climbing checks. It would take two to get to the dark and gloomy portal thing within the spider webs. And it would take four to get all the way to the top. It completes angles is, is basically what I'm observing here with the drawing tool. Okay. So like, it would be like two up and one to the left to get to the green portal. And it would be two up to get to the middle bar. All right. Well, we can see the blue one, can't we, on the middle bar? The and it'd be like two to get to the dark blue one. The midnight blue sucking your soul portal. Um, <laughs> not that I mean to imply anything, but okay. <laughs> the difference between right, the, shiny, you... the shiny light blue portal and the dark blue portal. But if we can see the dark blue one above us, then I'm thinking that's the, dark blue that's one the, the way one to go. See right now. Yeah, so let's head for that one to start with. And and, and then, then we can have a nosy at it, yeah. Okay. So everybody make a athletics or acrobatics check, and your target right now is just a 10. And woo, with a 25, you guys are practically sold. Oh my god. <laughs> I have to do math now? Don't make me do math. All right, you need a 30. That's definitely a 30. That's over 30, yeah. Okay. So you guys successfully make it. Barely. My one decent <laughs> stat, guys. <laughs> god. Right, so where do we... Oh, we all Yeah, you're like that. halfway, okay? Everybody do a perception check. Don't for crying out loud. <laughs> nope. She's put his way not, uh, worn off now. Well, Yelena, thank God. Because Terrell and Guy were going to make it up, out. up for that first roll. <laughs> Yelena has noticed with the 22 that there is also a green portal to the west of you. Okay. That it would take two, um, two, two, uh, trails to the west to get, but you would probably have, you would have to go through some spider webs unless you went up and, and from the top to get there. Mm. Which right. would take like an extra length of travel. Uh, so what do you do? You can continue climbing straight up? I feel yeah. straight up and, and have a look at that one first, yeah. yeah. Okay, the DC now is 11. So everybody make a acrobatics or athletics check. Oh. Oh, that's all right. All right, that's definitely okay. You guys. That's 27, 31, 39, yeah. Yeah, because you just need a 33 total. You all make it to like really the first landing. And you see to the left of you, you could run along the... Um, the board and head for that dark portal, but it's within a bunch of spider webbing. It would be tricky. You would probably have to make a dexterity saving throw to try to avoid the spider webs to get to that portal. Um, but you also can all make out uh, about 75 feet above you, there is this light blue portal. Another two links above you. And you can all make out now the green portal to your west. That would take two um, links to go through the spider webs and three to go up into the west above the spider webs. All right, so we. Uh, Is there any I way mean, we can tell which one would be better to go to? Yeah, I mean, I feel like if you're going to. If we're going to be able to tell anything, we're going to have to get closer to it. Apart from the fact that this one looks an ominous dark blue. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't Hi, look make an healing. arcana check. Let's try to figure out what you know about portals. Boo! Whoa! <laughs> oh, fuck! Another she shot knows of all the moonshine. Not know stuff. moonshine, but okay, here we are. Now, 
From what you know, Kai, by and large of portals, a lot of the times there's absolutely nothing about a portal that will designate to you where it's going to take you. In very rare instances, the portal is, let's say, decorated in a style that just kind of broadcasts that it's taking you to a specific place. And you're thinking about infernal portals. Infernal portals, they look like bad news. They have fire and brimstone and maybe skulls around the exterior. Likewise, your experience previously with a portal to the Feywild, it was located in a location that was very uh, verdant and mystical and was in line with the aesthetic of traveling to the Feywild. So, with Natural 20, you kind of have this vibe that like, okay, maybe a darker portal might lead you to like a darker place, maybe? But it doesn't look like, you know, any concept or any illustrations you've seen from the education you had growing up, the instruction you took from your uncle about the arcane arts of a specific portal to a very bad place that you don't want to go to. So it's a little iffy. You're like, eh. The other two portals definitely look nicer. They're a nicer color. Okay, that's what you're going off. Nicer color. Okay. Um, but being being a, a simple boy from the Underdark, <laughs> I can't say that with a straight face. <laughs> a, simple, a simple lad. From the Underdark. A dark blue portal. I mean, is that a bad thing? Maybe it's, maybe it's cool. I don't know. Oh. I, I don't think you any what. of these portals will take you straight to hell, though. That's You're definitely sure about that. How about someone rolls a d6? 1 and 2 goes dark blue. 3 and 4 goes pale blue. 5 and 6 goes green. Oh. I think we should aim for the pale blue one. <laughs> All right, fine. <laughs> also, no spider webs up there. Yeah, true. All right. Okay, I'm good with that. That's a good reasoning. Let's go straight up. So you're going pale blue? We're going pale blue. Man, I just yeah. choked on that. On that scotch. Woot. I shouldn't have drunk. I need to drink water. <laughs> well, everybody... If you're going to continue climbing straight above, like in a straight line higher, roll another athletics or acrobatics check. The DC is uh, 12 this time. Oh, crap. Oh, no. I <laughs> don't know. I think we're all right. That's 39, 40. Yelena pulls you through. Indeed. You a total of 36. So you make it just to like the tippy edge of this board that is sticking down. And now the only way really is up without retreating. So make one last athletics or acrobatics check. The DC is 13. Okay, please roll better again. Oh, oh no. Jesus Christ! <laughs> oh no! Oh. We plunge to our deaths, and you fumble. You like it's so high. It's so very, very high. And the end of this of this board is like so very precarious. And you know, it's like it's like the path is like right in front of you. It's not that far. Man, some of you probably could have missed these steps straight there. But, oh, uh, you know, <laughs> you didn't think about that. So everybody make a um, dexterity saving throw, um, except for Kai. Kai, um, you fall down to uh, the previous level, but you bounce back up. So you stay where you were originally. Yay. Um, but Terrell, and who, where, um, who had uh, sprinkles? Me. Who's me? Terrell. Okay. <laughs> you, want, you want me to do a deck safe for her as well? 
No, she was riding you. Um, so you and Yelena and um, Sprinkles get boomed back down to the second level. <sighs> and you all take... Um, I can't remember if it's D8 or D10, so I'm going to do D D8. You all take four falling damage. Okay. Um, Sprinkles does it because she's riding you, but like Terrell and... You both take four damage. Terrell and, and Yelena. Um, so, Kai, you're just standing on this board looking down at everybody else. Uh, now what? Um, well, how far can you guys misty step? 30 feet. So you can misty step to rejoin Kai. No problem. Or oh, do you want but to try get back to me and there and step. then Missy step and we can throw some rope down for you? Mm. I'll say mm -hmm. that Sprinkles can Missy step with you, though technically that's not like how it works. Well, to be fair, Missy step's got uh, sorry, Missy step. <laughs> Sprinkles got her blinky wings, has not she? Yeah. Hang on. Just how she about like if flutters her wings as you misty step and she she gets carried <laughs> along alongside you? So how about if one of us misty steps up to Kai, throws rope down for the other one that helps us get up, and then the other person misty steps up to the top and throws rope down for the other two to climb yeah. up? Yeah. Yeah. Because your rope <laughs> will make like one of these one of these links is the length of your rope, your like fifty foot rope stuff that you're carrying. That sounds like a better plan. That sounds like much more organization, doesn't it? Okay. I mean, Kai, if Kai has a rope, Kai could, like, dangle a rope for you. I do have a rope. And I that would a... reduce your climbing saving throw. To, to, to just rope. climb. Okay. So, Bye. so you could just... You could just throw a rope down for... Yeah. Throw a rope down. So if Kai throws a rope down, that reduces your, um your check by two and so it'd be 10 again just from where you are to where Kai is and then now you're all good again you bastard no problem so you guys uh with with the rope that Kai has generously provided climb back up to to rejoin your buddy with the goose Right. Now, what do you want to do? I think one of us misty steps up up there, and the other, and throws a rope down for the others. Um, you want me to do that? Uh, well, I would say yes because I've got a plus seven. But considering but, the way I've been throwing, um, <laughs> who knows? You're you're stronger out if you're holding the rope, sort of thing. Mind you, I've just held the rope while you guys have climbed up it. And... I mean, that the odds are technically in Terrell's favor. Um, but if you're cursed, Grim, I mean, there's no help. <laughs> yeah, I know. Exactly. <laughs> um, go on, we'll risk you. Go, you go, Yelena, and I'll, okay. I will try and manage another decent roll. Let me knock off a level two spell here. Boop. So, boop. Misty stepped up. I've thrown a rope down. Yeah. So. I mean, I could, I, in theory, yeah, I could misty step as well, and we both throw ropes. If we're both holding the rope for Kai, we could just haul him up. Mm hmm. True. And, like, Kai would need to make a uh, DC 11 check with your assistance and a rope. All right, I'll throw as well then. I feel like if I roll good, it will carry us. If I throw bad, you bounce. So, All right. So what are you doing? You misty stepping then, or you misty climbing. stepping or not? I don't know. I don't know what to do. I'm like, am I understanding what's happening here? Because one second right. it sounds like you're misty stepping, next minute it sounds like you're climbing. Yeah, okay. misty step. With All right, boots. hang on. Let me knock off a spell as well. Uh, okay, misty step. Okay, and we'll say that, like, Sprinkles flaps along with you somehow, ma magically. 
Okay. I mean, she can flop along with Kai, so... Yeah, I mean, she's a pretty, like, tubby... As an owlbear, she's kind of tubby, which is really, like, the goose factor that keeps them from flying if they're, like, too tubby. But she's working hard. She knows how important, important this is. So there's some, some will factor in there. She's making it work. Okay. Um, so you guys are on the top platform. You can see just to the, you know, like 25 feet to the left of you, there's this like kind of glowing uh, blue portal. It looks very, you know, like you feel like good things, good things are going to happen. <laughs> and, <laughs> and now it's, it's just left to Kai, the bouncy, to, to make this one last um, athletics or acrobatics check, the DC of 11. Oh. Okay. And he doesn't. He just, he like, he turns, <laughs> he slips. Let's go of the rope. He bounces down and then pops back up. <laughs> back where he started. Yep. Kai just kind of shrugs, Diamond. looks up at you and like, well, let's try it again. Any any ideas? Any changes? There we go. <laughs> oh, okay, okay, okay. It worked this time. Nice. All right. So now you have a clear a clear run to this portal. Should we take a slow walk up to it and see if anything? You if, know... if you get any good vibes. Hmm. Uh. Um. Everybody make a stealth check. Well, that was unexpected. <laughs> so Kai, Kai is like the darkness. For you, the spiders in that <laughs> web are like blind. <laughs> <laughs> all this bouncing, all this climbing and honking and screaming at each other about like how you're gonna traverse up the wall. Spiders don't notice. They're busy. They're like playing bridge or something in a corner. So you have you have um, all the time in the world to just examine this portal, whatever, before you go through it. Yeah, let's have a good look at it. <laughs> um, so, uh, perception, I guess. Oh, and I've done so well on these so far tonight. Oh, that was almost a 20! I mean, 14 and we have a 21. It's a portal. I mean, you don't detect anything unusual about it. There's kind of like a swirling mist through the center of it. And you kind of vaguely get out like a, a scene, a, a scenario of like where it's taking you. And Kai, it's kind of blurry for you. Like maybe you need to get your eyes checked. But like Yelena, it looks like it's just like another large like stone lined room. You see maybe a few plants, some columns, banners. Did we go through it or did we go see what the green This is was? just your perceptive like peering at the at the portal without having gone through it yet. I think we should just go through. There's no traps. What are you going to do? <laughs> like the portal doesn't seem trapped to, to Yelena. Yeah, should we just go in? Let's just go in. Yeah, let's go in. Okay. Go in through this um, swirling pale blue portal. Pale blue portal. And I'm sharing a map. This one's going to be big. I 
It doesn't have a, a grid on it. So I don't know why I'm dragging in this map. Has it loaded yet? Um, no. Not yet. Okay. It's, it's big. It's one of those animated maps, so it's going to take a really long time to load. But as you go through this portal, there's this kind of um, otherworldly sensation. And you feel kind of like there's this um, swirly-whirly, almost uh, stripping cleansing like you've been given a bath kind of sensation and Kai Kai do an arcana check okay yeah just a swirly whirly bath kind of situation but as you go through this portal um Kai no oh. Are you, I'm not Kai, um, Terrell, are you, um, do you have your sword out right now? I mean, I feel that going through the portal, yes, I would have got it out. So, momentarily, as you go through this portal, your sword, which normally glows, the, the bow blade glows, um, with light. As you go through this portal, it temporarily darkens. As if the magic of your blade is suppressed. And you see the blade itself kind of disappear back into the hilt without your command. But then as you appear in a very large, open, great hall, the blade reappears. Kai... The potion of bouncing that should still be affecting you mm -hmm. is dispelled. Has the shrink has the shrinking things been dispelled the as well? Then also dispels. Yes. And <sighs> sprinkles the goose is no more. She reverts into sprinkles the owl bear. Okay. Seems like a good decision. Yeah. And you see, like, your, your owlbear cub shaking her tail feathers. And she hoots And she looks around. She looks a little bit disappointed. But then she circles around and she sells into it. And she also kind of, she's like, all right, I'm, I'm, I'm myself again. And she looks up at you. What now? So you find yourself in a great hall. Can you see the map yet? Yep. Yes. yes. Okay. It's very, it's probably big and animated with like torches and stuff. It's very pretty. So it is very pretty. Behind you you see a blue-gray door. Well, you don't see a blue-gray door. I'm lying. The door behind you looks kind of brown. But you get the sense that behind you is the parlor that you were in previously. Right, so we feel if we went back through that, we wouldn't end up back in the wall. Which is right. good, considering that we've door, gone back to normal size. That door <laughs> leads back <laughs> to the parlor. Kind of like with like a, a judgment, a trajectory of like where you are. Assuming all these things are connected and, and they are not like each room isn't an extra planar space necessarily. That if this was a normal layout, through that door would be to the parlor. Now, you see there are some like kind of, there are kind of doors like littered around this room and hallways and stuff. But they're all closed barriers. You see very thick pillars, multiple um, ornamental potted plants. 
beside those thick stone columns. The chamber is lit throughout. Looking up, the ceiling of this room is kind of unclear. There are edges to the walls, like, you know, right at the perimeter. But it's several hundred feet above. And it's mainly like Yelena who could pick it out. And the roof from there spires high at a high angle. And it's glass. You can all see blue sky, but Yelena, even with her eagle sight, she can't make out the pinnacle of where this glass ceiling ends. You make out there's a there's a coat stand in one corner, much like the coat stand, in fact, identical to the coat stand that was in the parlor, but this one doesn't have a hat on it. It's just, it's empty. There are banners hanging down from about, well, several hundred feet up from almost where uh, the walls meet the start of the glass ceiling. What do you do now? Come check the. Does this look like a place where golems would live? The room, hmm. by and large, seems empty. It just seems like a grand hall, like an entrance hall. What are those round things by the pillars? Those are flower planters. Okay. And these. A door to each side and one ahead of us. Mm -hmm. Yes. There's a lot of like etched ornamentation into the stone of the walls and these like little f I don't know. Do perception check, everyone. At the risk of having to drink more moonshine. You say. <laughs> My dice wit. Kenny Wumpus. Yeah, like all of you, you're like not quite sure. I mean, it just seems like a very large, impressive room. But this is all, this is to all of you, this is the kind of place you would travel through, like if it was in a castle or a fort. This is a place that people travel through on their way to somewhere else. It's like a holding chamber if you're waiting for an mm. audience with somebody important. I just don't like the look of that scent a bit, that's all. Yeah, I mean, pick a door. Yeah, with what you East, rolled, west, or north? You can't pick out any, um, you don't notice anything odd or off. Mm. Should we go straight on or to either side? What are we looking for? Forgotten. We're looking for the key to Elkhorn's Emporium, the key to the lockbox at the alchemist's shop, and the golem codes. And really anything else that's fun and profit. Well, that too, yeah. But. Okay, so... I, I say work his way around and just pick pick the door closest to us. See what's in there. Could be left or right, or straight ahead. Yeah. I just don't want to go over that middle bit. <laughs> We're just going to work around. Yeah. <laughs> Not so... walk through the... <laughs> You stay away from just the little bit. And you do notice that these that. ornamental planters of flowers, they're kind of like on that line. Like there's an inset relief of, of stone and runes that is different um, in the part that is surrounding the center that's bounded by the four columns. And all of the ornamental planters seem to be sitting on that line. You see, it's of just runes. dodgy. Like, but it could, they could be the ornamental planters themselves. You know, you can stand on a side that is outside that line and look at them without having to, like, be in the danger zone that you're suspicious of. Do we think he would hide the codes in a planter? 
I'm just curious who's who's taking care of the plants. The, yeah. The, like, are they alive? The, yeah. the, the, like, the plants you know, the... are, um, well, you'd have to kind of, ex from where you are right now, they seem alive. All right, do we want to work his way around to the left or the right to have a look at him? Left. Okay. Then we okay. work our way around to the west to so look All at right. that first plant. So adjust yourselves accordingly. Why is it doing that? Oh, let me double check to make sure I don't yeah. have you guys locked. I do. Okay. I thought I'd done so. Yeah, it's like if I default, it locks all of the tokens on the map, and and usually I remember to turn that off. I can't move sprinkles, so. Um, let me move her. Let me drag her to you. Make sure, because it's been a while. It's been a while. Um, that you have control of sprinkles. <laughs> We have to work in making a way. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, uh, you make your way around <laughs> the, the southwestern column. Making a way. <laughs> and uh, there is one ornamental planter to the right of you. And to the left of you, about 20 feet, there is a very large door. It's about 20 feet tall massive, like large enough for a giant to walk through. Or a golem. Alright, can we have a look at that planter? Uh, yeah. Do a, um, a perception check of the planter. Damn it, I was hoping you'd do nature. Sorry, give me a moment. Kai rolled pretty good. Excellent. So both Kai and Yelena, you're like this is definitely a living plant. You have no doubts about that. Something is keeping these plants alive. Terrell's like just it's a plant. <laughs> um Can we lift it up to see how do we want to lift it up to you don't spot anything particularly um you don't spot any traps and this kind of goes to the immediate area too like looking around at these runes and stuff now while kai you don't make like a specific arcane inspection and evaluation of what the runes um signify you don't see any traps there's no uh like pressure points in the stone flooring. Okay. There's no so, triggers, etc. So somebody could have, say, hidden a spare key under one of these planters. Mm. Also, Yelena with a 22, you notice that uh, it's very clean on the floor on the stone tiles there's no sign of dust in this room that you would expect to maybe settle after a period of time especially if like people were ever traveling through here um but you do you can tell that some of the flowers in the ornamental plant have been plucked hmm <laughs> Can we tell what kind of plant it is? Is there a reason for it to have been plucked? Do a nature check. Hey! I got plus two to that. It makes no fucking difference. Ah! Uh, both Kai and Yelena. <laughs> Terrell's still. It's plant! It's plant! <laughs> I'm just like, just my whole background, and I just shite. But anyway, go I was like, <laughs> I have this, I have this feeling, like I feel like I've seen this before, like when, uh, when Drusel back in Rushfir was giving that whole alchemist 
all those lectures about alchemy supplies. I feel like I've seen this plan before. And Yelena's like, it's not one we've encountered, but she recognizes she recognizes this plant from the Feywild, and she knows it is a kind a plant that holds a certain magic signature that can be used as like a, a grounding for an incantation. Uh, grab some of those, I guess. Mm. Yeah, can we take a snip? So you pluck some of the flowers from this plant? Uh, yeah, if nobody has objections, hopefully this isn't going to set something off. Mm. <laughs> uh, if, if so, we deal with it, but it's worth it. Go. Yeah. As you pluck the petals, it does set something off. Oh, there's great. like this kind of swirl you feel like your body becomes a bit ethereal and you feel like you're it's like the petals in your hand seem to kind of dissolve into your flesh and you almost for a split second feel like you are the petals of this plant and you feel the dirt surrounding you you feel that you have roots instead of legs. And there's a moment passes and you are a flower. And then you find yourself open sky above. You're all kind of crammed into a wheelbarrow. Half of you was sunk into a bunch of topsoil piled there you look around you're in a greenhouse and I'm going to share another map with you oh this place is like Alice in Wonderland sure how I'm going to fit three people and an owlbear into a wheelbarrow. Actually, like, the weight of the owlbear is going to tip the wheelbarrow <laughs> over, and, like, there's just this pile of dirt spilling on you. Okay. So, everything we do causes some kind of interaction with the environment, we reckon. So you enter this greenhouse filled with just colorful, exotic plant life. And there's mundane herbs here as well. You see the, the it's a it's literally a greenhouse. The walls are just glass. It looks heavy. And it's soldered together with this iron this ironwork that's filigreed and ornate. There are several bird cages matching the style that line the perimeter. And you're seated in this wheelbarrow that's tipped over. Topsoil's been kind of just pushed over on you in a pile. And everybody do a, do a perception check again. feeling really bad for you, Terrell. Honestly, it was almost... It landed on a 19 and then thought, nope, 8. Yeah, just like a, like, a, like your dice are really hating on you right now. Mm-hmm. And of course, this perception is probably not your strong suit. No. This but... reminds me, like, you do have items in your inventory that have not been identified yet. Those, those like, green boots, for example. That's right. I, was, I saw that was in my inventory. And I meant to put oh, that yeah. back out and in housekeeping, put that out in the universe, but I'm, I'm, let me do it right again now that you have things that you loots and stuff um, that are not identified. But um, <laughs> Terrell is... Terrell, B, 
being a stickler for cleanliness that Terrell is, is so just knocked akimbo by all of this topsoil getting into the crevices of your armor. Just, it's everywhere. And you do not appreciate it. So you're very distracted by all this dirt. <laughs> so you don't take in your surroundings like Kai and Yelena do. Um, they can pick out that there is a door to the west of this enclosure of, of the greenhouse. They also take in that you seem to be high in the sky. Looking through the glass, you feel like you're like really high up. You are not on the ground by any stretch of the imagination. The other thing that the two, that Kai and Yelena pick out is that um, in the bird cages, uh, not all of them are filled. There are two though. One of them has some like blue birds that look like blue jays in them, and the other one has a red bird that looks kind of like a cardinal. And you also pick out. There are some flowers you recognize in this space. Fey flowers that you encountered previously near that Fey portal in the high forest close to Rushfair. Specifically, you see some of that um, lemon spain that was so attractive to the fake queen bee. You make out some of the Astra um, Sanita that Kai knows can be used as a component to make healing potions. And lastly, you see uh, this bulbous plant called Wizard's Hat that can be used to make explosives. And you also notice there are two trees, um, the blue one and the orange one. They're kind of noticeable because they're so colorful. They're definitely giving off a magical vibe. Terrell's dirty. Yeah, Terrell's no use whatsoever. Sprinkles shakes oh. her tail feather, shakes off the dirt, gets gets even more on Terrell, like an extra spray of, of dirt to add insult to injury. So what about the non-plant items in here? Uh, which non-plant items? There are also uh, herbs and stuff, like miscellaneous herbalist kind of things mm -hmm. that are non-magical. What are the metal... Those metal things are all things. bird cages. Bird cages, okay. So directly north of you is a bird cage that holds, looks like three blue jays. Mm -hmm. And uh, to the west of you, by the door, no, not by the door. Well, like to, by the door, but like to the south, that's kind of more square like bird cage, is a single um, kind of cardinal like creature. Cre cardinal bird um the blue jays there's three of them and there's various and sundry plants as well you know some of them look like, like they're kind of like uh spider spider like ferns with like long um stretchy um leaves yeah leaves is a word <laughs> different like ferns different bushes and shrubberies and just a whole bunch of flowers And vines and trees. Is my speaks with speak with animals still active? Your speak with animals would have been um, if it was still active. It would have been um, oh dispelled dispelled when you entered the great hall. The blue jays see you though, and you mm -hmm. see them kind of. They start to chirp, and they're kind of like hopping on their little perch inside the cage leaning towards you they seem to want they want your attention they've got it 
Uh, I hate burning another second spell slot, but... I can do it if you want. You want to do it this time? Okay. Ba -ba 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 -ba. I do speak with animals. Oh, it's a level one, so... For me. So you do a speak, for me speak it's with animals? Two. Yes, I cast Speak with Animals. As and say, soon as you Hi. cast Speak with Animals, these blue jays start chirping at you. Like, they're they're incessant. They're imploring. They're like, oh, free us, free us, free us, free us from this. Oh, merciless wizard. Oh, his tyranny. Free us, please, free us. What do you mean, merciless wizard? I thought he was a nice guy. Does he, he not look after cool. you? Oh, he is, but isn't this cage for eons? <laughs> well, they're a bit dramatic, aren't they? Where is the wizard? Have you seen him recently? I have not seen him recently. He is cruel. I don't want to see him. But any time he is near, it is to taunt us. He taunts oh, we are you. in a cage and he is free. I mean, I can kind of see the point. Um... Do you like right. We will sing for you. We will sing for you a lovely song. You will only set us free. Well, tweet, tweet, let me <laughs> do a <inside> check. <laughs> yeah, I was. Gonna, I was going to say. I was going to ask him if they've if they've seen him hide anything around in here. What kind of check did you want to do, Yelena? Insight. Insight. Sure. It's like, do what's an up insight here? check. Oh fuck off! Fucking die! Some changing colours. Change the size colors because they're cursed. Oh shit! I didn't mean to do that. Twelve. Yeah, you're not much better. You're like, yeah. I can old. understand their point of view. You also hear like there's this like little chirping from like the southwest from the cardinal, and the cardinal's like, oh yeah, you should set me free as well. So right. why do they sound so suspicious? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. It's like, why should I set you three? What can you do for me? Why are you in them in the first This is a quid pro quo? Is a quid pro quo required for my freedom? These are the standards you live by. Well, this is... What a world, what a world that a bird must live in! You can stay in the cage. I am in the cage. I only want to be free. What I mean, I could do? take you down to see that bird in a cage. There's lots of cats outside. Are you sure you want to be like three? Oh, <gasps> <The> cats! <laughs> but there is no roof here, and if there is a roof, well, I would be trapped with the cats. But there is no roof, so I can be free. If you only let me out of the cage, I will fly away, and I will live my life. Please. We did see a really, really hungry hawk on the way in as well. Please. <laughs> when bird. did you last see the wizard? What is last? Oh, wizard. Oh. The bird kind of tilts its head. The, the birds, like, you see all of them, like, tilt their heads at different angles. Like, they're quizzically contemplating time and its meaning. And when they last saw the wizard, it, it's been a while. He was a bit frail. If he'd set us free, we could have probably pecked out his eyes and gotten our freedom for good. You know, you're not coming across as a very pleasant entity and you're not <laughs> enticing me to let you out. so long! You don't know what it does to a bird. To be so trapped. Ah, oh, the torments. What a world for a blue jay in a cage. And there's like a chorus of the three. What a world! Are we what do you reckon? To be in trees? Are we not meant to sup on worms? <laughs> well, ache. Well, they're not 
enchanted i mean if they're excited about eating worms then they're definitely birds <laughs> they're dancing they're dancing on their perch right now like there's this but it's like an aggressive dancing as they like move their legs up and down worms 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 uh, are we sure that these aren't bad people that the wizards uh what's the word Tra transmuted into animals to keep them prisoner or something but they're still birds so let me free we are I mean, birds. It's... We are still birds. We have always been birds. Mm, yeah, well, the cat told us there wasn't any poison in the drink, and we drank it, and look what happened. But was there it poison po in the drink? Are you poisoned? It didn't poison us. <laughs> it just mo changed us. <laughs> Words have meanings. And we have always been birds. All right, we need something useful from you in order to let you three useful we are looking for two keys and some command codes i know that when the wizard comes into this space he's looking for herbs or he's looking for ingredients and i know through those doors he uses herbs to do things. Does that mean anything to non-birds? I mean, not really. <laughs> um. There is a word. Ah, oh. a non-bird word. What is the non-bird word? Ah. Uh. Kitchen. 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 Yes, it is a kitchen through those doors. Is that useful? Okay. Am I useful? Set me free. Set us free. <laughs> Bounds. <laughs> I mean, they're just annoying enough that it's probably it's worth to send it. Yeah, them free. <laughs> exactly. That's what I'm thinking. You know, Terrell just walks over to the cages and opens the okay, door. Go, go I'll get tell out. you something else before you open up the cage. I will tell you something else. That red bird, do not trust it. Which red bird? The red Carly. bird in that cage to the south. Why shouldn't I trust it? It will eat your soul. It is a foul bird. It is a red bird. We are is this some kind of bias type thing between birds and a bit of racism. <laughs> bird racism. <laughs> birds I know. are best. And you open up the cage and three birds fly out. And as they fly out of the cage, they immediately grow larger. They become these hulking winged things. They're still birds. Oh, fuck's sake. But they're <laughs> dire blue jays. Oh, that's hilarious. <laughs> Their eyes glow malevolently. And uh, roll initiative because they're being I'm just, open and close, just, and they're looking at you like you're all worms. I'll look at them and say, I fucking let you free. God damn it. Now I'm really tempted to go over and let the red one out. <laughs> yes. Yes. If they don't like it, there's a reason. It's a good call. And um, we that is the note we will end this session on. We'll start off with combat <laughs> next time. By God, there is going to be a combat. <laughs> I no, I'm just make curious. You Are you just improving the, the dire blue jays? <laughs> <laughs> I've, I've got to say, I've got I to am an asshole. Something. Oh, I love it. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you fucking are an asshole. Oh my God, Have you big. ever seen the picture of the of the goth fan? Like it's this weird little goth fan, like the dad and the mom, and one of the kids is a goth, and the other one's like in a blue, you know, sweater vest, and it's like the Corvid family. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and the, the blue guy kind of blue is a blue jay. <laughs> So I think that 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 went all together timing really first. So let's see. So the next session we will top off uh, with combat against these dire blue jays who are all assholes. 
they didn't lie, but you know, they're such assholes that, you know, mm. they, they danced and bobbed and weaved amongst the truth. I feel that that is a, a running theme in this place. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's a wizard's hangout. <laughs> True. What's you gonna do? I mean, I'm gonna. I'm thinking that now anything that has to be let through, we should just stomp on it. Um. So, pros and cons of this session. My big con is that I failed to record the first half of it. <laughs> and I hate that because it went really smoothly. <laughs> I feel. Um. I was strangely organized, and. <laughs> Yeah, it happens. And there was narrative and all that kind of stuff. But, um, yeah, okay. Uh, that was bound to happen. I mean, the second I got my act together, I was going to fail to record the session. <laughs> I mean, can you not... Because you set Twitch off, didn't you? I thought I did. Well, I got a notification through, so can't you get it from Twitch? Well, like, I have to see because, like, when I looked at break, I checked OBS finally, and it looked like it wasn't streaming or recording. So I could have sworn mm. that because I, I remember I like clicked the button, I thought. But like, I feel like maybe I thought I clicked the button, but I didn't, you know, click on it just right to actually engage the activity that I expected. So I only know that I definitely have a recording starting from our little adventurous break onward. Okay. I'll go back and definitely... look and see if there's anything else. Hopefully there is. Right. If, okay. if it is on Twitch, I'll, I'll be able to download it and Right. And get a copy. But unfortunately, the, it might not be archived what happened. But mainly it was that you guys um, uh, were like, you went to the tavern. You were kind of like, you know, Terrell was embarrassed by the, the busty barmaid. And you made your way south and there was descriptions. And uh, you got kind of bamboozled by a cat. Mm. But, you know, that's normal stuff. And wound Ember. up inside the walls, shrunken inside the walls. And that's where we picked up from the, the start of the recording. Um, so how did you guys feel about today's session? Uh, yeah. Were you Good. stressed? <laughs> I it just was like, no matter what decisions we made, they were wrong. Yep. And I just rolled like shit. I'll, I'll, apart from a co uh, two good athletics rolls, everything else was terrible. Yeah, I feel like that. I fell for Terrell. Because you, Graham, you really didn't roll well today. And that kind of is frustrating mm -mm. to consistently have like sub 10 rolls. And yeah. I, I mean, there's nothing we can really do about that except for me to like try to avoid making roll for things. No, because that's the whole point of the thing. So it's just, yeah. um, just the dice not liking me that's tonight. Tough. So. I did really think that maybe you guys would somehow wind up in combat um, the first half. Because, like, the thing is, you were... There were opportunities. And to kind of circle back, there was no wrong way to go about it. There were just multiple ways to get where you are now. And different things you could have chosen. Some of them were combat-oriented. Some of them, what you know, some of them wound up in combat confrontations. Some of them didn't, but they're all like progressing through this wizard's cottage slash headquarters slash lair slash tower, whatever it is. Mm. You know, it's just which things you do. I will say that you almost wound up in a combat, not with a cat. Like that whole thing about bureaucrats versus heroes, um, you were like on the cusp of having a combat and drinking actually avoided that mm. for like spoilers and stuff. It was like an evaluation. You're being evaluated at that point. Was the cat impressed maybe? <laughs> um, the cat decided to let you have a shortcut or like a, a non-combat shortcut potentially and then there was the pretty lights so yeah and the lights the cat cat had fun 
<laughs> the cat has a is has a good disposition towards the you cat, at this point. The cat has no downside here. Yeah, the yellow cat likes you. Excellent. I do feel like we're going to be in the uh, wizard's tower for um, a while, a few months. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm trying to not keep you here too long. There are not, um, you have been, let me just say, for meta purposes, you have been through, there's a limited number of rooms that you can access right now. And you've been through, uh, like four out of you've been through about a third of the possible rooms that you can access okay. so I fingers crossed I was hoping for like two but like maximum I expect three sessions in here. I would hope by that point you would like reach one of at least one of your goals yeah okay, okay. if not by the end of next session but by the end of two sessions I would expect you to like um gone everywhere that you could potentially go and discovered everything you can possibly discover that is relevant to you I do feel bad that you haven't gotten to fight anything though I mean are you guys well, missing apparently combat? we get to because <laughs> this is three sessions that you have not fought anything well, we're really? still problem solving wow. you know, yeah, it was like, true. it was available but like you you're making like these kind of role playing choices that are side skirting conflict I didn't want to attack the cat I didn't want to I didn't want to hate the cat so I know <laughs> yeah we are not murder hobos we're not murder hobos <laughs> only the bad people Oh, Lord, your mom. Yeah. I mean, the cat might have engaged you, but they would have, they would not have, um, they wouldn't have fought to the death. They would have fought to the play. You know, it was all for fun. A few cat scratches. Yeah, a few uh. little bops and scratches here and there. But it's all like just to see you kind of wiggle around and run and be panicked. They didn't want to like kill you or anything. But the, the dancing lights provided that outlet for them um okay well unless there's anything else like things that would like help you guys like is there anything that you feel like you need as you continue through this wizard's lair bad dice that i should <laughs> other than better dice which i can't i have no I'm power I might, over. I might go find my actual dice and do that instead of a dice for, um you can always <laughs> die. You can roll a person with like actual physical dice if you feel like it's gonna help you spiritually. No, not I'm based on not that. based on what I used to do. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I want you to be your best selves as you adventure. Mm. Okay, I lost my phone. I was gonna go over like what is our next play date, but what did I do with my? F oh, there it is. Okay, that's like how. You can ob obviously I'm over 50 because um, I don't know where anything is at any given point in time. Third weekend in October would be the 21st. Is that cool for everybody? Yeah, I'm good. We're good with that. We well, I haven't got anything on the calendar yet. so I don't have anything on the calendar yet either, so it's no. probably okay. So I'm going to put down tentatively October 21st at 1 p.m. We shall play D&D again and you shall fight these Blue Jay assholes. I guess the only thing is, when do your clocks fall back? Oh. That is not until November, right? Didn't they just, they've really shortened that. Because ours is, ours is the last weekend in ours, October, and I, know, I thought yours was a couple of weeks. Yeah, ours is I don't November know if it's before. 5th. Right, okay, that's all right then. So ours, yeah, ours don't move till the 5th, so whatever. Yeah, yeah we're good. Stuff, yeah, ours go the weekend after, it'll so we're all right It'll happen in between then. sessions, and we'll be yeah. in sync. Yay! Yay! Okie dokie. Alrighty, All right. well, everybody have a great weekend. And you, you too. Thanks, Bonnie. You too. Thanks, guys. I'm going to go All play right. some Baldur's Gate. Speak to you later. <laughs> <laughs> Bye. Speak to you later. Bye.